Hey guys, Chris Camaro here. Welcome back to my channel. So it's been about two years now since I did my video on uh, the traction control system, ABS, and Stabilitrack failure problem on uh, a lot of GM vehicles. And that video uh, got a lot of attention uh, because so many of you seem to have this issue on your car. So um, that was two years ago, like I said, and, and ever since then, um, the fix that I did uh, has worked. Uh, although it was never really intended to be a permanent fix and, and I told you that at the time and the problem has come back after two years So I am going to get it properly repaired, but I figure you know two years it, The car owes me nothing for for having lasted that long It's a uh, pretty fortunate that, that it worked as, as well as it did and it was just supposed to buy me some time to have the convenience to go in and fix it when I was ready so we're gonna do that today and uh, I don't really know how long it's going to take because it's a tedious diagnostic process and the mechanic may have to, uh, you know, take a multimeter along the entire wire loom going from the wheels all the way to the computer and, uh, you know, figure out where the, where the electrical fault is. There's no, there's no real procedure for, for checking that. That's kind of a random thing. So we're just going to let them do what they do. And then once they're finished uh, finding the problem and repairing it, uh, then I'll get back to you guys, give you an update, and let you know what it was so that you have an idea of where to look if it's your car. Uh, in the meantime, however, um, when these lights come on, as a lot of you have reported and, and confirmed uh, what happened to me as well, um, when these lights come on, they cause drivability issues. You get stuttering, you get your brakes pulsating, and it can be dangerous, uh, unsafe to drive. So what you want to do is you want to do a little bit of a, a tweak to your car before you take it on the road, whether you're just driving normally or whether you're actually taking it straight to the mechanic, doesn't matter. Uh, once the lights start coming on and you're having drivability issues, you're gonna wanna address that uh, until you can get the car into the mechanic. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that first. So pull out your, your uh, instruction manual for your car. Uh, it's gonna be different from car to car probably. Uh, in, in this case for the Impala, it's chapter 1013, uh, 1035, 1035. Uh, let's just go there. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so 1035 is your fuse block diagram. And there's two fuse blocks, just so that you don't get confused. There's one inside the car, and there's one under the hood of your car. And you want the one that's under the hood of the car. That's where the, uh, the fuses are going to be that control the, the uh, ABS system. You can see here there's four square fuses in the middle of this diagram. It says ABS motor 2 and ABS motor 1 and they are uh, correlated here and here. Um, so this diagram, you wanna match this up with your actual fuse block. Sorry, let me try to get the angle so that you can see it here. So uh, let me just check, see what we got. Yeah, actually it's already, it's already good the way it is. You can see all the big chunky blocks on the on the right hand side they line up with the two gray ones on the right side there so everything lines up the way it is so basically you want to remove you want to remove the top left and bottom right corresponding to abs motor 2 and abs motor 1 which are these 60 uh amp fuses here now you might need pliers to do this i've already uh, done this a couple times so it's not that hard to get these out in my case but once you pull these out, it will basically disable the entire system. Uh, it's not gonna do anything hazardous to your car. You can put these back later. All this is gonna do is gonna make, it's gonna make all the lights come on on your dashboard. So don't be alarmed when you see them. Uh, not all the lights, I mean all the lights corresponding to your TCS, ABS, and, and, and Stabilitrack, all those lights will come on. and they'll stay on uh, until you put these back. Even if you put these back, they'll probably still be on anyway, but this will make them on permanently. And that way you won't have any drivability issues. The computer won't be constantly confused because of continuity issues. It won't be flipping on, flipping off, back and forth, back and forth. So you wanna take these fuses out, put them in a safe place, put your fuse cover back on. Yeah, so now that's back on and then you can drive the car. So uh, I'm gonna take the car to the mechanics now and that's pretty uneventful, so I'm not gonna videotape that, but 
Uh, once I have something to report back, I will let you know. Okay guys, so I'm just on my way back from the mechanics and the results were interesting. It looks like the front driver's side was the problem this time. Um, if you'll recall from my last video where I was doing the quick fix on the Impala at around the two and a half minute mark, um, I was looking at that side and there didn't seem to be any damage and it was the, fr it was the front passenger side uh, that I ended up doing the, uh, the patch job on. Um, however, this time it was the front driver's side that uh, the mechanic found the, the, the wire was damaged and uh, needed to be repaired. And it looks like the, the area of concern was about six inches away from the wiring harness. Uh, so again, if you go back to, to my first video at the two and a half minute mark, you can have a look and see approximately where that is. But essentially, you know, the, through a combination of abrasion of the, uh, of the installation of the cable and water ingress into the cable, uh, it was basically corroding the wires and uh, causing them to, to be discontinuous. So that was repaired. And as you can see now, um, just doing a quick uh, road test, uh, there's, there's no lights on the car now. So the ABS uh, and everything uh, is, is working correctly again. So um, this really emphasizes the point that that small length of wire running from the connector uh, back to the computer is really susceptible to damage on these cars and possibly on other cars as well. Um, I didn't see any obvious evidence of you know moving parts interfering with that segment of the wire loom, but that doesn't mean that there isn't something going on while you're driving. It could be road debris, it could be you know, rubbing against the subframe. There's a lot of things that could be going on there that might be responsible for, for damage. So uh, I just want to emphasize, re-emphasize the point that uh, when, when the car gets old and you're starting to see these lights come on, it's really good idea before you spend a lot of money and before you get mechanics involved in, uh, you know, randomly replacing components and wheel hubs and things of that nature to, uh, to really just inspect quickly the, um, the, the wheel hub area and, and check the wiring harness in that area and see what's going on because oftentimes uh, the evidence is forthcoming and you can do a quick repair and sometimes fix the problem and as, as you can see from this particular case from my case um, even though the problem came back after two years um, because it was that long since I did the last video right and I thought that my patch job had just you know run its course and and it had gone bad again but it was the opposite side of the car that had the problem this time. So it looks like the patch job that I did was still good enough um, that it, it, didn't, it didn't come back on that side. It came back on the other side that, that I didn't do a fix on.